Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we will cover cloud function type. It's trigger based cloud function and especially covering the cloud Firestore triggers because that is what's commonly used as your backend database when building a Flutterflow app. So what cloud Firestore trigger does is basically the function runs on a trigger and the trigger can be four types, create, update, delete, write. So for example, on create means it gets triggered whenever a document is written for the first time. So for example, if you want, if a user gets created the first time and then some, maybe you want to do something, right? Whether it's sending a push notification or setting an email or even just simply creating a new field in the document to say this is a, to flag this is a new type of user or whatever, right? A on update is when a, a document is being updated and any value has changed, of course you can check for specific values, it does something. On delete is when a document with data is deleted, you do something to it. This is actually, the on delete one is actually used in the Flutterflow, um, fire, if, you go to firebase, if you go to Flutterflow and you go to Firebase, this on delete one is actually, sorry, it actually sit, there's actually a delete user reference. This actually uses the on delete cloud function. You can see here on delete. And lastly, the cloud function, the trigger cloud function I want to cover is on write. It's triggered when on create, on update, on delete is triggered. Technically, we don't need to cover this, but the, I feel like the most three key ones you want to use is on create, on update, and on delete. And I'll cover them as well on how you can write them and how you can execute them. Technically, you don't need to execute them because they are triggered by something else. I'll show you how it runs and how it works in the back end. So what I want to do with this on create cloud function here is chain up what we've learned with on request where we're creating a new document in a collection called on call CF with a random ninja. When that's created, it triggers this on create Firestore cloud function where we update that new document with the field new status as yes. So while it's deploying, I'll explain the difference. So you can see here, the major difference is really up top here. It goes um, very similarly to on request and on call, the region you want to deploy to, but the trigger point is called Firestore doc document or the collection you want to assess whether a new document has been created. And this is simply the execution of the code itself. So now that the cloud function is deployed, um, if we go back to the Chrome console, let's run the on request cloud function again. So to recap, what the on create cloud function is going to do is basically create a new field in this new document that is being created by the on request cloud function. So you can see here, we run it and a new document should get created. You can see here, bam, if I click here, there's a random integer of four. And then suddenly out of the blue in the background, the new field called new status equals yes is created. Um, and that's how this cloud function works. So this is very powerful because you can actually do things with it. As I mentioned, whether they're sending a push notification or sending an e email trigger to the user. The next Firestore trigger cloud function I want to cover is the on update. So to recap, it gets triggered when a document already exists and has its value changed. Um, so what I want to do here is write a set update function for you guys to understand how it works and how to write it. So this is an on update function I created just then. What it does is basically it looks or well, it listens for the Firestore collection called on call CF on update. And it basically stores the data before update and after update, what is the data? And then here we're checking if the random integer that we created has changed. And if it has, we just have a new field called change flag set to true. And if it hasn't, you know, nothing happens. And this is how you write an on update cloud function. So I will deploy this, deploy this quickly, and then we can see how it works in execution. So now this function has been deployed, I'll show you how it works. So we go back to our Cloud Firestore. 
So on update is basically looking for changes, right? Suppose I go to here and I change the number to four, i.e. no change and save it, nothing happens. But if I change this value to 10, for example, the function is running now in the background. And then if you wait a little, boom, you can see here change flag is set to true. And I did nothing in terms of telling it to go set the change flag to true. And then if we go to another document, we can do the same thing here, 11, from four to 11. And you can see, boom, change flag is equal to true. So that's how you use that on update cloud function. It's quite a common cloud function to use. Suppose you have a denormalized set of data where in a post you store the number of comments. And imagine this is a Facebook, right? Instead of storing, instead of counting the number of comments every time in a different collection, you simply set that value to update every single time a new comment is added or deleted. So instead of Firebase front end counting it all the time, you have a denormalized set of data in a collection called posts and where the field is just simply a number of comments applicable to that post. This is actually quite common for a lot of large platforms where the where something of value is being denormalized because it just creates so much efficiency instead of counting number of posts every time, or number of comments every time, they simply look at one value, which is the number of comments in that post. So lastly, what I wanna cover is the on delete cloud function. So to think of example, maybe for on delete, if we delete a document in this collection, let's just recreate a new one. So it always has five. So let's try that to show you how our on delete cloud function works. Okay, I've written an on delete cloud function here. And what it does is basically, is very similar to, the structure is very similar to the other ones on create. So on create and on update. And instead of the keyword here is on delete. What happens is basically if a document gets deleted in on core CF, uh, we just simply create a new one with a random integer similarly, but we're going to put a new field called replacement doc. So we can identify that this is a replacement document to, to for the one that we just deleted. How Flutterflow, as I mentioned, Flutterflow uses this for its delete user reference. For example, what's happening here is that when a user gets deleted, it actually deletes the document of the user. Well, how we can write a code for it to expand on this further is if it's on delete, if the user document gets deleted, let's go through all the relevant collection where the user reference is tagged, for example. Or another example is if a post has comments under it, if you delete the post, you might as well delete the comments in a separate collection to save space. Anyway, so I've deployed this cloud function. Let's see how it works. So suppose I delete this collection. Sorry, suppose I delete this document. And you can see here, now there's four. The cloud function is running right now. And you can see here, whoa, a new document just created. And you can see here, it actually has originally created with random integer free and replacement document as true. The new status as yes actually ran because there is actually an on create cloud function, if you recall correctly. Whenever we create a new document, it creates a new field called new status and flags it as yes. And that's how a on delete cloud function works. So if we, if we do it again, we definitely I'll click straight to the new collection. You can see, boom, a new document has been created with the new status of yes and replacement doc of true because this came from our on create cloud function and this came from our on delete cloud function. I hope this series on cloud functions helped you understand the power of it and the different type of cloud functions you can use. So to recap, remember there's on call cloud function, you're calling it from your app, on request is calling it from the web, commonly used for webhooks, or if you give it the link to someone, the schedule cloud function, which I've covered in a different video, please go watch it. If you want need to run a set of code on certain schedules, and then lastly, the trigger-based cloud function with the trigger of, uh, of it being the Firestore database. So I hope this series has been super helpful. 
in improving your skill on the more technical and code oriented side of Flutterflow development. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Flutterflow.